Disney's Best Music Magic 89.9. Welcome everybody to another round of interviews. My name is Meg Santillan and today we're being joined by someone who is Oh my goodness, I'm in the I'm weak in the presence of BD right now because this man has dude, like you have been named one of the 13 <laughs> under 30 by Forbes Asia. You were also GQ Korea's man of the year at some point. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Magic 89.9, the one and only Eric Nam. Eric, Hi. thank you so much for being with us here today. Thank you for having me and thank you for that generous generous introduction dude generous is <laughs> it is not generous it's true <laughs> you have those titles under your belt well, over you, there thank you thank you and of course welcome back to the philippines it's been two three ish Almost years three years yeah it's been a while and of course i just want to ask bro it's been since it's been a while how are you how have you been Whoo! um loaded Ooh, question <laughs> yeah i've been good um you know i feel like the past three years have been difficult for most everybody that's correct um, but i'd like to think that we are on uh recovery I, I i hope that we're all getting back to it and i've been overall good i've been busy working uh i've been busy touring for most of the year i shot a movie nice and when i'm not doing that we i work at dive studios and mindset so just staying really busy you know, I want to ask about Dive Studios later on. Yeah, and yeah. the movie's coming out next year, right? Yes. yes I'm yes, excited yes. for that. Yeah, because like I, I was checking your filmography. I'm like, oh, it's not out yet. Okay, it's not. we have to not. talk about that. Okay. But of course, you have a show later on tonight, yep. November 10, 8 p.m. at the Samsung Hall. It's for the There and Back Again tour, yep. which I'm so happy you're doing because, again, people have been clamoring for you know you being on stage after all these years again. So... Again, I'm just gonna go and go back in the history because it's your first interview with us here on Magic 9.9. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us how did this all get started? Because I know that <laughs> yeah. you had you were basically on track for for as a business analyst yeah. before you decided to switch like lots of gears and go into yeah. entertainment. So how did this whole like Eric Nam entertainment industry get yeah. started? Um, well, I guess I started in 2011. Uh, I was going to be a business analyst at Deloitte Consulting. Yeah. And then I ended up uh, on a Korean TV show called We Dan Tansing, which is like Birth of a Great Star. Wow. Um, I mean, very, very fitting, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, I was really nervous. I don't, I don't think I knew it would end up like this. Um, <laughs> but I got to the top five, quit my job, signed a record deal, and that was about ten years ago. And so. Uh, since then, I've been doing music, TV, uh, a lot of hosting, a lot of interviewing, a lot of variety shows, and now acting as well. So it's been a lot. How did you end up on the show, though? Like, that's, um, that's always like a pivotal point in a lot of people's yeah. lives. Uh, I got a message and an email through YouTube. Wow. And it was like, please send us your passport. And I was like, who are you? This is a scam. <laughs> this is definitely a scam. I've been there. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, this is like somebody promised me like $50 million. Just give me your social security number. And I was like, uh. but I sent them just enough information to see if they would send me a flight. And they yeah. did. And I was like, oh, Whoa. it is real. So I got on the flight and I ended up in Korea. And that's how I got on the show. Dude, that is yeah. like... Nothing fishy about that at all. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Um, I did not get my identity stolen. I, uh, nothing bad happened necessarily. So, but, but be careful, guys. Don't give your information out to everybody who asks. Guys, very true advice. Yeah, <laughs> be very discerning. Be very smart about it. Just, you know, if you need to test it, just enough so you can test it. That's okay. That's actually very good, true advice from someone who's been there. So now that you're doing your sophomore, I'm still surprised, by the way, that uh, There and Back Again is mm -hmm. your sophomore album because, dude, you've had so many EPs under yeah. your belt. And yeah. the thing is, like, looking at the track list as well, I'm like, it's, it's basically like seven tracks yeah. on There and Back Again. Also, I just have to mention, like, on first glance, the track list looks like it's, it's got a lot of, like, we call it Hugot here in the Philippines. It's like emotional baggage. <laughs> yeah, I, like, lost on me. I don't yeah. know you anymore. What yeah. if? Admit. Like, can you tell yeah. us what the creative process was behind this album? Uh, okay. So, yeah, it's my second full-length album. Um, I guess in Korea, full-length albums are very rare. I yeah. feel like everybody oh. does a lot of singles, everybody does a lot of EPs, mm -hmm. um, but full-length albums, for some reason, are just, they're not very often done. Um, and I also think the state of music, people don't listen to full-length albums very much. Ah, That's okay. like the biggest thing. Um, so it was, you know, 
I was like, oh, okay, first album as an independent artist. Let's mm -hmm. go for a full length album. And so that's what we did. And um, the writing process, this is the longest I've ever taken to write an album. Uh, we oh. took, I probably wrote from February through August and six months, which is not typical because when I was under a Korean label, I would write for like a week and then we'd be like, okay, this is the album. Let's wow, really? Yeah, so it was like very, very, always very rushed, always very, because we never had time. But I guess because uh, of the pandemic, yeah. um, you know, I was just working at Dive and Mindset and then writing an album when I could. And so it was a very much longer process. And during that process, I think, like I do with most of my albums, I am processing my emotions. It is a very, there is a lot of emotional baggage and there is a lot of truth and honesty in it. Um, <laughs> which is good. Which is good, I think. And, and even right now, you know, we put this album out in January. The first single, I Don't Know You Anymore, came out September of 2021. Yeah. So I'm in the studio right now, even though I'm on tour, going through emotional baggage, existential crises, and uh, conversations about my mental health uh, as we write the next album. So it's a, it's a very constant thing. You know, it's good to have that because the thing is, they say that when you're at your truest, that's when you write and you create the best mm -hmm. material out mm -hmm. there. So I see the theme actually, the thematic of the album, like the, the, the overall theme of the album really does shine through. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that you're being, you know, true and honest with it because, man, I'd rather take that than something rushed out in a week. Yeah. I'm surprised one week. That's, that's insane turnaround time. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's because I was always so busy. Um, doing different gigs or different shows or whatever, um, I would be all over the world. I'd go to LA and I would have maybe like four or five days. And so wow. I would do two sessions a day, morning and afternoon mm -hmm. or night. And we'd maybe write in a span of four or five days, write 10 songs and then we pick whatever we get from there, take it to Korea, record, put it out in you know a matter of three, four months. Dang, dude, okay, so. that's, that's insane. Well, if you think about it, a lot of the, my K-pop friends, they're doing three EPs a year. Right. Okay, that's good. That's a Which good point. Which is crazy. Like that's wild. In the states or in the West, I feel like Adele puts an album out every four or five. years. I was going to mention. Actually, you mentioned her. Yeah. yeah. Bruno puts out a, an album every four or five years. It's yeah. not you know three a year. So it's uh, I'm trying to find that balance. Which is a good balance to have. Yeah. Like three or four years is a long time for an yeah. album. I, I have to admit. Like yeah. Adele does it in yeah four years between her albums or five sometimes. I'm yeah. like, and at that time people are like. Is she still around? Is she still making music? It's like Lord, right? She also yeah. takes her time. And yeah. but a nice balance of, you know, like a year or two. It, yeah. It's it's good to keep people wanting, but not keep them wanting for too long. Exactly. And the thing is you have time to also like write introspective songs, to reflect, do mm -hmm. like go through all the creative motions to yeah. write a great track. So speaking of tracks as well, I just wanna ask Eric, what's your favorite track or cut so far on There and Back Again? Oh gosh. <laughs> I think my two favorite right now are I Don't Know You Anymore, which is the lead single, and then Wildfire. Um, Wildfire, because it is very different from everything else on the album, and it's very different stylistically from things that I've done in the past. It's very, I think, haunting and emotional, and then there's like this crazy drop at the end, and performing those two live are always very fun. Yeah. Because in Wildfire, people are pretty much silent. Nobody says anything. Nobody sings. They just kind of watch and listen. And then I Don't Know You Anymore is the complete opposite where people sing every single word and scream, I don't know you anymore, every single time. I cannot wait for the show later then for to see everybody go wild for yeah. for both, well, for, for, the, for the latter track. Because of yeah. course, Wildfire, everyone's going to be just like, yeah. just waiting. It's very, it's, everybody's very tense during those songs. No, like, and that's that's what you want to get from the audience, yeah. though. Just that, just the the range of emotions, right? Mm -hmm. To see people either going crazy, singing euphorically, or just, just to watch how tense they become. Exactly. Because it's watch, it's like watching a good film, mm -hmm. right? Either people are going nuts mm -hmm. and going wild for the action, and waiting for 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 every single chorus, or to see them just go dead silent yeah. during those really silent lulls, but that's when you know that they're really listening. Exactly. So man, I, is this your first time though performing Wildfire, Wildfire live? In the Philippines, yes. Um, I mean, it's been three years. So. Yeah, it's, uh, but you know, I've been on tour since January, so I've, I've done it 60 something times, I think. Yeah, mostly in Europe and Asia, um, Europe and America, right? Uh, yeah, we did Europe, America, Australia, 
New Zealand, Hawaii. Dang, dude. Uh, That's a worldwide. <laughs> yeah. Move over, Pitbull. <laughs> we've, really been, we've been everywhere. So um, Asia, I think, will be the final leg. Mm -mm. I don't know if we'll make it to Latin America immediately, but we'll see. We'll see. You never know. Exactly. So you fingers crossed. Know. Like, yeah. I mean, you've already crossed off like four continents at this point. Yeah. One more to go. I mean, unless yeah. you want to perform in Antarctica, then, you know, like, you not know gonna... <laughs> I'm not trying to do that right now. <laughs> um, but it would be cool at some point. Yeah. I know, right? Like, imagine how many people can say they performed in all seven continents. Not many. Fingers really crossed, dude. Many. Fingers crossed for you. But given that you're, you know, constantly touring as well, like, I really want to ask Eric, like, how do you balance the, the being on a TV personality and being a recording artist? Because not too many people can say they can do both yeah. and, you know, keep a balanced schedule. So how yeah. do you do it? Um, you know what, I, I think everything kind of goes in seasons for me. I think over the past few years, I've kind of stayed away from TV mm -hmm. um, because I really wanted to focus on music and also focus on building with dive and mindset. And yeah. so that's where I've really focused my time. And then when it comes to TV or film, I think it's more about being intentional. Yeah. Um, I think I've, I feel like I've done so much TV that it's now like, if I'm going to do it, is it going to make me feel really good? Or what do I have to contribute to a show? I would rather not be on a show if I'm just going to sit there and laugh and not have anything meaningful to say or to do. Um, and so it's really about finding the ones where I'm like, this is really exciting or this is new or I really want to do this because it's going to be fun. Uh, and so I just kind of, I try to really look for those and if the schedule works out and I can do it, sure. If not, I, I think I've also have to, had to learn that it's okay not to do everything. Mm -hmm. I think I used to have this thing where anything that comes in, anything that's cool, I have to do it. But now I'm like, let's be intentional with your time, intentional with what you want to do. So it's all about intention in that sense. Dude, pick your own battles. Pick yeah. your battles, exactly. Yeah, exactly. No, don't, that's why I don't stretch yourself out too thin. Actually, it's really good advice to like give people because I know so, so many people who try to do every single thing possible that comes their way. Yeah. And in the end, they're just burned out. Yeah. There's a husk and you know, like, that's, it's important to learn which ones to do, like which ones contribute to your time yeah. and which ones you can really contribute to. So, exactly. yeah, you know, like it's a good reflection. It's actually a good thing, thing to reflect on, like which things you can be, which you can contribute to mm -hmm. rather than just, you know, sit there and laugh. Like, because I know a lot of people who just kind of do that now. Yeah, which is, you know, which is fine because I think some people are just like, this is easy or this is, you know, what I want to do or this is how I'm going to make a living and I think that's completely fine but for me I think because there's so much to do yeah it's about really choosing and picking and and the other thing to go back to your question is I think for myself personally I thrive when there are multiple things going on so Ooh. when I have music and TV and business and different things it's more interesting for me to say, I'm in the mix of all these things. What can I do that only Eric Nod can do? Or yeah. what can I do? Or, or even from that, it's like doing all these different things informs one another. So being on a really fun TV show, having a great experience says, oh, this could be a really cool song. Ah. Having a great song can lead to a great tour. Being on tour and seeing, visiting somewhere like the Philippines, I can, you know, be like, oh, maybe I could do something in the Philippines that's really fun like this. So all of it to me, works together. I think from an outsider perspective, it can be like, wow, you do way too much. But for me, it all kind of somehow weirdly makes sense. It actually does, come to think <laughs> of it. Because you know, you, you, take, you take bits and pieces of everything happening in your life, mm -hmm. and you use that to create something in another part of your life. Yeah. And you know, you, it's, it's this weird like, uh, what's the word for it? It's, like, it's, weird, it's, like, it's a weird melding of all different facets yeah. for a lot of people. But if you can make it work, why not, yeah. right? Absolutely. It's a, it's a synergistic thing for me. There we go. Synergy. That's, yeah. that's the word I was looking yeah, for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. Of and, um, you know, like with all of this happening, you keep mentioning dive as well. And uh, mindset, was it? Yes. So can you tell us more about both of those? Because I know yeah, these are yeah. like your personal projects as well. Yeah. Um, well, Dive Studios, uh, I founded with my brothers uh, in 2019. And so at Dive, we have podcasts with some of your favorite K-pop artist. Yeah. Um, mine is the Tebak show and we have everybody from, I don't even know, like NCT to Stray Kids to Jesse to Jay Park, like everybody on the show. Um, and then we have Get Real, which is hosted by Ashley Peniel and mm -hmm. Junie and they have a different 
personality there. Um, but we also have like fun digital content. So that's like the K-pop entertainment side. And then from that, we realized that people really love to talk about mental health and the struggles yeah. and the challenges. And so we created Mindset, which is a safe space for artists and fans to talk about struggles and life challenges and mental health on an app. So we have daily self-care, we have journaling, we have great content. Um, even from the Philippines, we have Catriona Gray who's on it. Wow. Um, so it's, wow. it's a lot of great artists, K-pop, Western, Asian, yeah. just everybody uh, doing, hopefully creating things that are positive for mental health. So that's kind of what I've spent a lot of time on, uh, mostly through the pandemic, yeah. No, can I just say thank you for creating that because a lot of, I know a lot of recording artists, actually a lot of uh, creators in general need that, yeah. need that safe space. And I know like, I know, like I've heard that in, especially in, uh, in, in the Korean entertainment industry, like things mm -hmm. get really cutthroat. Mm -hmm. So a lot of, a lot of artists from, from over there really need that. Yeah. And yeah. it's it's great that you're you're basically pioneering this this kind of safe space for creatives because, bro, believe me, creatives need that safe space. Yeah. Just take a break. I mean, I think it's I think it's important because you know the app really makes it okay for not only creatives but everybody to have the conversation, right? Yeah. You have leaders in entertainment, people who are literally impacting millions of people through their music or acting or whatever, talking about being bipolar or having depression or having anxiety and for millions of fans to listen and say it's not just me yeah it's a human condition it's everything that everybody is going through and opening up that conversation which i think is incredibly important especially in uh many places where mental health conversations are not are, are very taboo and they're yeah. not very openly discussed so we're our goal is to really say it's okay to say i have anxiety or bipolar disorder or depression or ADHD or whatever condition that you may have. Um, and that's kind of what we're doing. So guys, check out Mindset. Very yeah. important, especially if you want to talk about mental health in all its different facets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, like you did mention a lot of them, bipolarity, like, like sexuality, all of these things, especially here in Asia, you know, it's, it's, it's all pretty taboo. Absolutely. You, you would know this. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And that's, you know, it's, that's a great thing. You know, we have people who are there to talk about it in a safe way. You know, we have Seventeen, we have JB mm. from God7, we have American artists like Summer Walker, Amine, Black, like all sorts of people who are coming to say, I have these issues, I'm gonna share it with you. Yeah. You can share it with me. And so uh, if you guys haven't, I, I, I would highly recommend it if you're just curious at all, just to, to listen in some incredible stories. So guys, again, check it out, yeah. Mindset. Please do check it out and check out all these great conversations with all these different great creatives because, you know, again, no matter where you are in life, no matter what you're doing in life, you're still human. Yeah, absolutely. And every, a, every we're all the same. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't think people the, the, that you put on pedestals are any different from you absolutely. and I because, like, again, it's the human condition, mm -hmm. like you said. And, man, thank you so much for championing that because not a lot of people of like come forward with mm -hmm. all of these things mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so well speaking of creatives and artists as well are are there any filipino artists though you'd love to work with i know this is such a generic question oh but i'm gosh. genuinely curious <laughs> um, you didn't mention catriona so you know what i uh i would love to meet catriona she's been on mindset she has her collection but we've never met so i would love to meet catriona I am also very ashamed to say that I am not the most educated when it comes to Filipino artists. I know a lot of Filipino, like American artists, or like half Filipino artists. That still know? counts, by the so, way. So, like, you know, obviously Olivia Rodrigo. Oh Pearl yes. Mars, uh, her. I think I was on the same flight as her, but I was too scared to say hi. What? She's literally. We made eye contact, and I was like, Oh my God, it's her. And then I just kind of like shriveled away and I was like, Eric, I know. <laughs> it can, something can happen right there. I know. Um, but I, I just think there's so many incredibly talented people um, who are in the Philippines or even, you know, outside of the Philippines, part of the Filipino di diaspora. And it's, it's, I don't know what it is. What did you guys do and eat and grow up on eat. that makes you so <laughs> good? Um, so yeah. Chalk it up to all the balut. Have. have you ever had balut? I, I think I've had, I don't think I've had it here, but I had a version of it in China. Oh. Which is 
Yeah, I don't know. Wait, maybe I have had it here. I don't know. I mean, we could go sure down to the streets. <laughs> I'm sure there's a video somewhere on YouTube. Um, but yeah. Man, like it's, although like I have to say, like I, I don't know what it is either. Like a lot of people have said, you Filipinos, how come all of you guys sing? I'm like, oh, have you heard like our versions of Frank Sinatra's My Way? You will, you will, you will regret saying that. Why? <laughs> Why? Apparently it's a thing over here really? where we've had cases of people murdering each other <laughs> over My Way in karaoke bars. I don't know what it is, but it's a thing. Like, it's it's a like, law. Like not like karaoke. Dro- a lot of karaoke bars had to drop my way from their playlist really? just because it got that bad at some wow. point. Yeah. Well, you know what? Um, I I think there's something very amazing about the passion that Filipino people have for music. Yeah. Um, music and the arts, and I, I I don't know where or how it is there but i i remember even like the first wave of youtubers um in the states yeah the majority of them were incredible filipino american singers um and i was like wow i don't know what it is it's in the blood you guys are great i chalk it to chalk it to the parents who also go oh you sing you go sing for your for your family for your <laughs> for your for your uncles and aunties and they're like no, and all of a sudden now they're on stage. And now they're on stage. <laughs> now they're killing it worldwide. Exactly, cool. just like you are, Eric. <laughs> just don't don't forget the fact that you're also killing it worldwide, well, my dude. You, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so of course, uh, thank you again, Eric, so much for taking time to be with us here, uh, here on Magic Nine Point Nine today. One final thing: any words for your Filipino fans who are excited to see you as well on stage after yeah. so long? Um, I I am so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me back. Um, I hope this is, you know, me, I don't want to say first, the second time of many to come of me being here. And oh, I'm sure. <laughs> the, the, the show, I'm so excited about it because I don't think there are many, particularly K-pop artists who are able to travel with a live band and dancers and a full lighting rig and, and really bring a performance that uh, I think feels amazing in a different way from traditional K-pop. Um, yeah. of idle K-pop, I would say. So, yes. Um, I'm really excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I love you guys, and I hope you guys are uh, happy, you're healthy, and, and that you know that you're loved. And again, thank you so much for this thoughtful interview. I've, I've had a blast, and I hope to be back soon, guys. So thank you. Of course. I mean, it's in the name, man. Like, you say there and back again, but I say you're here and back again. <laughs> over and over and over again. <laughs> Of course, again, folks, Eric Nam here live on Magic 9.9. Again, Eric, thank you so much for being with here and uh, being with us here. And oh my God, like that, just your last line right there. Mm, that's gold stuff right there. Uh, that should be you. a quote that you tell everybody and that everybody should repeat to everybody else. I just hope because, so. just yeah. because you know everybody needs that. Yes. So once again, folks, my name is Mick Santillan. That's Eric Nam right there. Look, still looking stunning in this. Great sweater, Thank which I still wore. <laughs> I gotta say, dude, this is a vibe. Dude, you're wearing a kilt. Not a lot of people can pull off a kilt, but you're you're rocking that. It's a good look. Thank you. I don't you. know if y'all see y'all. This, this is a great look right here. It's even a vibe. The, even the belt, like it's like. <laughs> whew. Anyways, so less about fashion, more about this. Again, folks, you guys have just tuned in to a great interview right here on today's best music, Magic eighty nine point nine.